Hey, thanks so much for the introduction. Uh, nice to see everybody in the gather space. And so sorry, obviously, that we don't get to see you in person. Can you see my slides okay? Looks great. Thank you. Yeah, so thanks. We're just going to quickly tell you about our knowledge base for preserving immersive media. Um, so Tom and I have been working on Tate's Preserving Immersive Media project for about three years now. And Sasha Arden has just joined us at Tate as a part-time intern. Um, the Preserving Immersive Media project started at Tate because we tried documenting this 22-channel uh, Bruce Nauman sound work in the turbine hall with some ambisonics and 360 video. And in doing so, we created a bit of a preservation challenge for ourselves. How do we keep these files accessible in the long term? Um, we spoke about this process at a couple of conferences and somebody approached us saying, hey, uh, we hear you know how to preserve VR artworks, which wasn't exactly true. But since a lot of good ideas start with some confusion, we decided that we would start applying Tom's knowledge of software um, based artwork preservation with my experience of spatial documentation to try to preserve a born VR artwork and the Preserving Immersive Media project was born. Um, so we got some funding from Lumen Art Projects. Um, we, that allowed us to work with a selection of artists and artwork case studies. We interviewed them about their works, their approaches to production and their own approaches to the future of their work. Um, we hosted some workshops and some hackathons with like-minded people who brought some amazing case studies and contributions and experience. Um, and we began to have something that looked like a community. So we started uh, a mailing list and we'll, we'll pop a link um, in the chat for that later where folks can stay in touch. Um, so reporting on three years of research after a Herculean effort by Tom and a little bit of faffing by me, we published our 60 page preserving VR artworks white paper, um, which is a big document that we can um, share. It was really hard to finish for a few reasons. Um, partly the pace of the technology is moving on so quickly that we'd finish one section only for the last section to feel out of date. Um, all of the formal aspects of writing and finishing something take ages, all of the sort of presentation aspect of it. Um, and also just this feeling that it needed to be a complete document um, was obviously really hard to achieve. So we always wondered what it would be like to make a more sort of wiki-like structure. And we must have mentioned it one too many times as at that point, our amazing collaborators, Jesse de Vos and Raza Ocheta at Netherlands Institute Sound and Vision stepped in with some funding to make it happen. Um, we got some pointers from our friends at the DPC, which was really helpful. And what was once safely a distant idea was now a terrifying reality. So at the core of the knowledge base is the idea of the shift away from a sort of authored document and towards um, evolving interlinked community content, being able to say what we didn't know, um, reporting on work in progress, trying to capture workshop outputs, and really just trying to find a home with the minimum of barriers for all of that amazing fragmented knowledge that's out there in the world that might be incomplete or just doesn't get published. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Tom. Check. I'm just going to share my screen. Everybody can see that. Um, so the first thing we wanted to do is try and um, work out what platform would be best for the knowledge base that, that we wanted to create. Um, and so we reviewed a range of um, wiki and wiki-like platforms um, and for each considered uh, cost, features, usability and sustainability. And, and within those categories, a, a bunch of different um, factors were, were assessed. So in the end, we, oh, and I'll just say about this, um, this spreadsheet, actually, if anyone is interested in this and is also looking at these platforms, um, we're very happy to share it. So just drop us an email. Um, so in the end, we selected a platform called um, Gitbook. Um, and we felt that Gitbook provided um, a decent um, compromise in terms of um, all the different features we needed. Um, and also offered free accounts for nonprofits. So that was a, a useful incentive there. Um, so while it is a third party kind of hosted service, um, and this means we lose some control, um, 
this meant that we could avoid the um, kind of protracted setup time and costs that would have been associated with, with setting up our own platform. And given the, the relatively small scale of this project, that, that was essential for us. So GitHub is, is and, I, and I feel like I should say this um, very quietly, but GitHub, Git Book, sorry, is not uh, an open source platform. Um, but what we, what it, what it can do is, is sync the content um, that you write within GitBook with a GitHub repository. Um, so that means we have a markdown backup of all the all the pages um, on the site. So really, we're just using GitBook um, as a kind of markdown editor and renderer, really. So with that said, I will jump into um, the the site as is. So over the past few months, we we've begun populating um, our, our GitBook um, site, and um, we're going to share just a, a preview of it with you today. Um, and there'll be a link at the end of the, the presentation um, and we, we can paste it in the chat too. Um, this is publicly accessible now. Um, so the disclaimer is that this is still in its, in its very early stages. Um, and this, I mean, most of the content on there is, is unfinished. Uh, and indeed, I think it reflects on our approach um, to this, um, which, which Jack um, mentioned, which is the idea of sharing work in progress, sharing notes, sharing stuff which wouldn't have a home elsewhere, and avoiding this idea of ever having some kind of finished, completed um, document that tells you how to do something. All this stuff is constantly evolving, particularly when it comes to immersive media, you know, VR, um, 360 video, real-time 3D rendering, stuff which is constantly evolving. So I'll just uh, whiz through and share a few things um, very briefly. Um, so we have, the first thing to say is we have a code of conduct um, and a reporting process, which um, we, we ask people to agree to before they get involved in this project. Um, we have a license, which means that anything that's um, hosted on the site um, is, is shared with a Creative Commons attribution um, share alike license. We have a glossary. And this is a, a place to define frequently encountered immersive media technology, um, a kind of as a starting point for being able to have a conversation about all this stuff. Um, and this is really thanks to the IPRES 2019 um, hackathon, um, which we organized um, yeah, back in 2019. And thanks to some amazing contributions from people who joined us for that. Um, we had a, a wonderful um, Markdown glossary that now has a more permanent home here on the knowledge base. So hopefully that will continue to grow. Um, we have a bibliography. Um, so we've got links to external content embedded throughout the, the knowledge base, uh, but we've also set up a, a Zotero library, a public web library for, for key references. So we have this collection of pages here, understanding immersive media. Um, and this is all very much work in progress, but the idea is that these will be pages to help people who are new to the technology um, find existing work on, on these areas of immersive media and to get a sense for the technology and how it works and how it might be used. Um, so at the moment, I'm working on an introduction to real-time 3D um, and particularly Unreal Engine. Acquisition resources are materials designed to help people bringing immersive media materials into collections. Um, so far, we've been working on a, an acquisition checklist, um, which we thought might be a useful starting point for people um, looking at this, um, and working on some guides for archiving specific software components. So again, I've been looking at Unreal Engine and archiving XR runtimes like Steam VR. Um, so I'm now I'm going to pass over to Sasha, who's going to talk about some work they've been doing in the knowledge base. All right, thanks, Tom. I um, have been just honored to be to jump onto this project as a part-time intern. So in my kind of two days a week, noodling on all of these uh, questions, I am um, really bringing my experience in working with collections from an installation standpoint in my career before coming to graduate school for conservation. And I thought that one of the things that would be um, very helpful from a preservation standpoint is, as we've heard throughout this conference, that standards can be very helpful. So um, 
I added the digital preservation standards. These are links out to current projects um, that are kind of developing some kind of standards for metadata or standards for file formats. Um, I also added the mobile platforms section because for um, AR and um, kind of handheld VR platforms, uh, we'll need to, you know, those the, that content is delivered on a, in an app container. So, um, of course, that's kind of a, a lurking monster in, in addition to all of the VR hardware and 360 video hardware that we may need to pay attention to. And finally, I've added uh, repair guides. And in the interest of you know, not replicating work that's already out there, uh, we, we might be interested in um, a preservation approach that focuses on keeping existing hardware working. And of course, um, interactive things uh, like VR require that people are actually using it and not just uh, kind of showing it in a display case. So we may need to do that kind of work. And I will hand it back over to Jack and Tom now. I've forgotten, is it, is it me now, Tom? <laughs> it's. <laughs> Um, okay, so you might be wondering how you can um, contribute. Um, so rather than us dictating what you know or how you might fit in, um, we'd like to ask you, um, what do you know? And how do you think it could fit in some way on the site? And then we'd like to arrange the site around that. Um, we're aware that to get the creative juices flowing, um, you know, you might need some sort of threads of ideas of what we're thinking about. So we've got some questions that we have arrived at um, throughout the project. Some are open ended research questions. Some are sort of ideas of lists of resources that we think that would be helpful that we just haven't completed yet. But crucially, this is also the place where you might be able to um, contribute and add your own questions or thoughts. Um, so yeah, in, in sort of conclusion, I hope that's like a, a sort of brief overview of what we've been up to. I um, feel like at every conference, um, when asked, has anybody got any questions, people love to jump in and give you suggestions instead. So as a gift to you, we would like to offer you all the floor to jump in with some suggestions for us. And I think that's it. Oh, she, should, should we share the link? There we go. Awesome. So there you have it, everyone. If you have any suggestions you want to put into the chat. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat right now. We have a few minutes. Um, yeah, just want to echo a, what a lot of the comments so far have said that this looks like a really cool resource. I'm really excited to check it out. Um, also, thanks for the, the spreadsheet Tom, that you shared. Um, I don't know if that's available for people to, to, to look at publicly or not, if that's just like an internal resource, but I think there are some fans of that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's totally available to look at if anyone would like to. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I could just share the link. Um, Jack, do you, do you have any issues with that? Man, I I'll share chat. far and wide, you know, I want to see that spreadsheet on top of the world yeah the thing i was wary of is um it that we kind of put these scores in for individual platforms which i think are a little arbitrary and super dependent on your case so maybe take those with a grain of salt but yeah i'll paste the link in the chat apologies Amazing. Yeah, getting something some... that got a low score we're getting some thank yous and please shares for that um are there any um, any questions or suggestions um, for Tom, Jack, and Sasha? I mean, I think we're just getting a lot of positive feedback and people interested to to check it out further. That's oh, great. Sorry, I mean, I would just say is. if you, if you want to get involved, like we're, we yeah, we just really want to collaborate with other people on this, um, and we know there's there's probably little pieces of work going on out there on these kind of topics and and particularly given the the big audience we have in, in the in the room today um from a video background we'd be really interested if, if there are people working with 360 video 
and there was a question from Ethan, but I think that was answered about sharing that spreadsheet. Um, we do have a question from Sarah about what numbers of interaction have you seen so far um, with the wiki? It's, it's literally went live, I think, yesterday. And this is the first time we've ever shared the link more widely than just um, a few chats, a few video chats. So at this stage, it's really just um, um, us and a set of, of kind of um, I guess core collaborators from the Pre Preserving Immersive Media Group who we, we've known for a while and been working with for a while and we, we wanted to show them early and see if they'd like to be involved. So it's yeah, it's still very much in the experimental stage, and we just really hope that there is enough interest for people to to get involved. Great. Yeah, in the in the contributors section of the knowledge base, you can see who has contributed so far, and if you jump on, make sure to add yourself uh, there so you can get some love for your sharing sharing your information. Awesome. I don't see any other questions. Oh, except for um, a newsletter. What was that? Sorry. Um, there was some question about um, a newsletter that you might have. Um, well, the, there is the Preserving a Mass Media Group, um, which is a mailing list, essentially. Um, again, I will put this in chat um, if someone hasn't already done that. Oh, I think somebody just did it. So, yeah. Oh, Thank awesome. you, Rasa. We are just about to take a break, but well, I'll, one more question um, from Claire. Uh, can you talk a bit about um, the metadata standards you're working with? Any favorites that uh, felt most suited to the needs? Well, I, I've, I've been doing a little bit of research on uh, metadata standards, and basically there are uh, no agreed upon standards. And in the preservation resources, section of the knowledge base i've linked out to various groups who are who are working on that so i, I think that's uh something that will hopefully be finalized in the coming years but uh, it may be a very long process before some kind of agreed upon um set of metadata is actually arrived at i think we're dealing with such a sort of broad selection of media here as well we're sort of talking about 360 video which has there, there is a sort of set of standards put forward by by google for that and, and various others actually um, and then we're also maybe thinking about like you know standards for sort of 3d objects that are within games engines and so we're sort of covering um, a lot of ground as well in in uh, in what we're trying to do yeah well i want to thank so much for your very interesting presentation and sharing this new this brand new resource. Um, I think we're going to take a 15 minute break now and then come back at 35 after the hour, whatever time when you're in. Um, so yeah, let's take a break. <laughs> 